And hey, everybody, welcome again to Wingman Nation and to my virtual campfire. I am the Wingman. I got a special guest for you today that I think you are going to really enjoy listening to. He is probably the most respected RV Lemon lawyer in the country. He is my badass friend, and he is a true gentleman, I guess, as long as he's representing you. No, he's a gentleman all the time, but boy, when he is in court, he is something else. He is my friend Ron Burge, so let's go ahead and bring up Ron right now. How are you, sir? Good morning. How you doing, Alan? I'm doing great. Hopefully, we can get through this thing without any technical issues. And uh, so t <laughs> today, on my notes, I've got that we're going to talk about some good things that are happening in Texas and Florida. We've got um, a, a motorhome company uh, that a well-known motorhome company that is starting to have some uh, recurring problems. Uh, I know that you want to talk about something you snooze, you lose, and I want to talk about some future cases that you may or may not be taking on. So there's a lot to cover here. What do you want to talk about first? You know, I live in Texas. What's going on with RVers in Texas and the law and in Florida that's happening? Well, yeah, I, I agree. We might as well jump right to Texas then and we'll comment on Florida in the process. In, in the whole country, there's a couple of states that have a special uh, government run or sponsored, if you will, government program of sorts that's supposed to help RV owners and car owners and such to resolve disputes over defective vehicles without having to go to court or hire a lawyer. Sometimes they work good, sometimes they don't work so good. Texas has got a unique problem, and that may be a problem that Florida and others have that are quietly handling it, I suppose. I had a, uh, a person call me the other day talking about whether or not he ought to file a lawsuit or go ahead and go through the arbitration process that the government has set up in Texas. And he was set to go through there and was trying to go through it. And then he got word from the arbitrator that he was sorry, but he wasn't going to be able to schedule a hearing for him for months down the road. And he asked him why. And the guy said that, well, he used to have less than 100 cases that he'd had to deal with. And now he's got over 200 just in the next month. And it's kind of like he can't get to them. So here this poor guy is after about four months in the arbitration process, thinking that he's going to finally get a hearing, only to be told, well, you're still four, five, six months out. And the part that is bothersome about that to me as an attorney is that the federal law, which says they can do this arbitration stuff, says that they got to get it totally finished and done with inside of 40 days. And they're not doing it. So how does that affect me? I mean, it just sounds like I get to, me as an RV owner who is trying to get some kind of resolution to his case, that, that sounds like it, it wasn't good news. Well, the good news is the process is there. The bad news is they're not really effectively handling the process on the government's end. If the states that have that and have set it up and require people to go through it in order to use their state lemon law, if they funded the process and manned it with enough manpower to handle the complaints being made, then it'd be great. So the process, the process is a decent one. Properly set up, it would be workable, but it isn't. It's being underfunded, undermanned, and whatever their problems are, they're not keeping up with the demand. And the one thing that we as taxpayers expect is that when we need something from the government who's supposed to be providing it, that they're going to provide it. And so we're supposed to go through arbitration. Is that part of the whole process when you have a lemon claim, wherever, you know, whatever state you're in? You're, you're... It depends on the state. Uh, Texas lemon law and Florida lemon laws in particular, and some of the others are set up in such a way that they have a state run or organized process for this arbitration. And where they have that, they require you go through that before you can file a lemon law case in the courts. So the idea is that you may not ever have to file in court, but the problem is you got to get through the process and get an answer in order to know whether you need to go to court or not. And if it takes you eight months or so to go through the process or longer, well, you're wasting your time because if you don't like the result, you're right back at the beginning. All right, let me switch and go over to uh, motorhomes. There is, from, from what I hear through the grapevine, there are some uh, people that have bought very expensive motorhomes from a, a well-known, well-respected brand, been around for a long, long time, that there's this recurring issue that's been coming up. Do you want to talk about the brand and what, what you're seeing? 
isn't necessarily just the cracked frame issues that everybody hears about, which seem to be dominating a couple of the manufacturers of fifth wheels uh, and a few uh, travel trailers. But uh, this is something apart from that. And this is basically the uh, reduction of quality, if you will, in some of the manufacturers that had been gobbled up by larger manufacturers. Uh, and the one I have in mind in particular is Tiffin that seems to be having some unusual problems lately that uh, are not a, not a problem of anything other than just, uh, well, we'll call it crappy manufacturing. Uh, hmm. They have problems with their slide outs and they've come out with a, uh, a unique system being used on one of the slide outs that isn't used on the other slide outs on the same RV. And the problem is it's a cheaper, less functional and less reliable system. So the result is they've had a lot of breakdowns of these systems. And then you take a look at, well, what are they doing? And this has been going on for a couple of years now. Well, they came out with their supposed fixes on it after they apparently rattled the chain of the manufacturer of the slide-out system, who actually came up supposedly with the system that would fix it. And the problem is the systems they came up with to try to fix their system wasn't working. And uh, then most recently, we had a client who had that problem, and he had actually been in the shop and had it worked on, I think it was seven different times. And then the last couple of times they said, well, we came up with a new fix and this is going to do it. And then they kept saying the same thing because it wouldn't do it. And so we finally, uh, he finally got to the point of frustration and decided, heck with this, for the amount of money, I'm going to file a lawsuit. So we filed a lawsuit and then the first thing the factory said is, well, we got a new system. <laughs> well, that didn't work the other times. But they said, you know, well, this will really work. We'll let you talk to one of the people that had it done. Well, then lo and behold, up pops a... Uh, response from somebody else uh, who actually had a Tiffin, who had the problem, who had this fix, who found himself in the same problem. So we know that the new fix apparently isn't always going to work either. So their way of trying to solve their owner's problem isn't even going to work. And so the result is the owner's still in the same spot he was. It's kind of like it's a come to Jesus moment for the factory and they just don't want to pray. Why don't they just, it sounds like to me, they're spending a lot of money and, and, and uh, expending their equity that they've built over years and years and years, because Tiffin is a very well-respected brand, generally speaking. Why don't they just fix the problem? I mean, why don't they just pay a little bit more money, problem solved, have a recall, or, you know, bring these coaches back in and let's fix the slide outs once and for all. Two things about that. One of which is, you're right, that Tiffin, uh, as far as respect goes, it used to be in my experience as a guy that people who have bad RVs come to to complain, it used to be that when they said, what's a good one, I would give them a very short list, and it was three, and Tiffin was on it. Tiffin isn't on it anymore. The quality level has really shrunk. Now, why aren't they trying to fix it? Because I think so far, it's not their money. At this point, they're going back to the supplier in Raising Cane, and the supplier is coming up with the promised fixes. So it isn't really costing them a nickel or a dime at this point. There's no risk at them, to them at this point as far as they're concerned because it's being borne by the supplier who came up with this system that doesn't work. Well, the problem is in the long run, Tiffin's going to be a, the one held liable. But so long as they can drag it out and promise somebody's working on it, we'll get back to you with the next fix. As long as people put up with that, Tiffin's perfectly happy with passing the buck. You say there's not going to be a price and they're not paying the price. I disagree. I think in a, in a sense, they are paying a price. They just don't know it yet. And in and, and confidence, consumer confidence in their product. I mean, they, they used to have an audience that was so unbelievably loyal. You know this. And, and people that have older Tiffins that, that really love them, that met Bob Tiffin and the family, you know, and they go over to Red Bay. And, and now it has changed. And you know, the world changes, I understand, but these corporations that think that they're not going to be affected by just passing the buck, I don't know. Maybe they're not, they're not going to be affected, but, but to me, they're making a foolish, foolish mistake. You're right. In, in terms of Tiffin, it is costing them, but it's not costing them actual money out of their pocket at this point. It appears that what they're doing is passing that cost on to the supplier. But in the long run, it's going to cost them in terms of customers, in terms of reputation, and in terms of every aspect that relates to customer care. Right now, though, 
the money is what they're looking at. What's this thing? I got an email from you uh, late yesterday that just said, ask me about if you snooze, you lose. Tell me what's going on there. What did you mean? Yeah, it, 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 I have for a long time been telling people that you, you have to be very careful that the factory doesn't just string you along. And then the time in which you can actually file something in court runs out and you're stuck. Well, we had a client, a prospective client who called in back in January. His RV had been in the shop since August last year. Okay, so roughly four months he calls us because it still isn't fixed. He's had some serious problems and some not so serious like every RVer. And we uh, told him, okay, this is what you got to do and everything else. And he decided to go off and try to get the uh, dealer in the factory to help him get it resolved. Well, he called us yesterday. Hadn't been resolved. Still in the shop. And now it's been in the shop a year and not fixed. Slide out problems and whatever else. But it's, it's kind of like, gee, this is terrible. And then I find out that, well, his time to actually file a case ran out. They strung him along to the point where his rights were gone. Now, there's a way around that, but it's not easy, and it's much harder as opposed to just simply you file on time. It goes back to, you know, what my mother always said. You snooze, you lose. So his RV has been in the shop for a year when should he have contacted your law firm? I mean, you don't, as the RV owner, you you're hoping that they can make your fix. You make your, your RV whole, and then you get strung along. At what point do you say, okay, that's it, without running the risk of, of running out of warranty? I think, what, I think what you have to do is recognize that in your warranty, they have limitations on when you're going to be able to do anything legal, so to speak. Everything before that is just wish you could you and maybe. But when the time runs out, you are truly stuck at that point at the mercy of the RV company. And they can just blow you off, and there isn't a darn thing you can do at that point. Most of these warranties say that you have to file a claim within a few months after your warranty runs out. So I think the way that you look at it as an owner of an RV with problems is a month before that warranty runs out, if you haven't gotten things resolved, you need to start talking to a lawyer because the lawyer's gonna need time to get things done on it. 